because um, this initiative we are trying to build is uh, totally spontaneous. Uh, ten days ago, I was looking, I was watching a Netflix movie uh, on the, called Seaspiracy. It was not the first time I've been like watching documentaries like this that have been uh, uh, triggering my mind. And as we are building NAS, the notebook as a service, I was trying to find if anybody has built notebooks on earth data, on, uh, you know, food consumption, on energy consumption, CO2 emission. And I, I found the one from Peter, uh, the article he has, he has written in uh, Toward Data Science. So I decided just to contact like 24 hours later, we were on the call together and uh, we talked about uh, what we can do as uh, data folks, as data geeks. Uh, to help uh, on on getting better data and better understanding of what data is available in the world and how we can take uh, take it and make sense of it um, for um, following the basically how what's the health of the planet today? Um, it's it's it should it's silly it it could be silly but what if we could have an indicator that will follow every day or every month? on the scale of zero to 10, something like how our planet is doing. Like it, it, it looks like impossible to do. So we thought it was too crazy, but uh, as the, the idea of, uh, of, uh, of um, making something with the data came on, uh, there is the Earth Day on, the, on, on this Thursday, 22nd of April. What if we could like uh, launch something and try uh, to talk with people about uh, this idea and uh, if it's clicking with anyone then let's let's try something <laughs> what we're going to do is um we're going to present uh, peter is going to present uh what he does uh who he is where he comes from he, ha he has made a little presentation and uh then we are going to discuss about uh what topics we could build in notebooks uh that would also add value to society based on the different uh, visuals that have already been done but are not really easy to follow because you don't have the whole script ready so basically we want to take visuals that have been done visuals that have not been done but being able to push everything into notebooks and open source it will have enable anyone to to take it and uh, take it from there and improve it so um without any other explanation peter i leave you the mic um, and um, let's go. Let's start this thing. Uh, thanks for having me, Jeremy. I'm very, very chuffed to be on here. I'm uh, Peter from South Africa. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a presentation. Uh, it's not really long, um, but yeah, I basically thought maybe yeah, I could I could try try condense the past uh, few years, like five or so years of my life, uh, into what I've learned in this this domain. Um, so the presentation is more on sort of citizen data scientists, like people that uh, don't have to do it for a living, but but sort of do it. It can be for a living, but but for fun or, or basically, what is this concept of a citizen data scientist, um, and and why is it becoming popular, and and why do I think it's quite important? Um, so yeah, to start off. Um, just to put on myself, um, my name is Peter Turner um, here from Cape Town in South Africa. Um, and I've worked as a data scientist, uh, software engineer and uh, physical asset management consultant. Uh, mostly sort of a mixture of all three for about five years. Um, been in software for, for more than that, probably about eight years. Um, but yeah, so, so sometimes I write articles on Medium uh, in my spare time. And a lot of the time it's on data science type stuff. Um, and that's why it was quite cool when, when, when Jeremy uh, got hold of me. Uh, and sometimes people get hold of me on LinkedIn about it. And it's really quite cool to connect. And it's just like a cool world we're living in now that this can happen. Um, and yeah, just in my spare time, I do things like surf and ride motorbikes. And, and I'm quite active usually. So that's just a bit of background. I studied engineering, uh, make robotic engineering in Stellenbosch, which is near Cape Town as well. Cool. Lucky you, you do surfing. <laughs> yeah. Close to the um, sea, right? I am. Uh, so I've, 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 I saw a shark the other day, which wasn't so fun. 
<laughs> oh. Um, nice. So, so the one thing I think about data science, uh, which is that it's not so much sort of, it's often the best sort of, in my experience, uh, it actually, and it might be counterintuitive and maybe even a bit um, like uh, a bit controversial to say this, but I think that most of the time it actually, the, the when you're successful with this stuff, you, you start with like a hypothesis or a question. Um, or you don't sort of just get a big data set and just sort of uh, look at it and, and then stuff just comes out. You kind of have to hypothesize something and then try and disprove it kind of with normal science like like so you 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 start with like a like a, a statement that you think uh might be true or a question uh or or a problem that is specific you're trying to solve like why is why is this group is there a difference in in the parameters between this group and the other group let's say uh so so that's something i've, I've kind of found is that it's it's not so much just diving into a data set and getting answers it's you have to have the right question first um so some some um questions that i've tried to answer in my own time and also have written articles on is things like the one jeremy uh, read which was is there can we can we find a statistical correlation between co2 emissions and global temperature increase just with the available data we have uh, so is there a way to 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 see if they're causally related based on the time series data? Um, this one actually turned into more of an educational post, and I didn't actually dig into the actual question as much as I would have liked, but uh, that was the question initially that I, I tried to answer. Um, the other one was not to do with, with uh, climate or anything, but it was I wanted to know whether silver was a good investment, and I wanted to see whether... Uh, because solar panels use silver uh, in their manufacture, um, if we could try and forecast the effect that increasing solar energy and solar PV panels will have on the silver price. Um, and mm. that one was quite, quite cool, actually. Like, like That one was probably my most successful one. Um, and then the other one was, can we formulate a methodology for doing data science, uh, like a, a more formal methodology so that we can become more efficient uh, added as a company because our company did sort of data science in mines and in big uh, dairy factories and things. Um, so yeah, that was some of the, the 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 questions I had that I've actually tried to answer. But then there's some other questions that I've. These are just like a few, but uh, some other questions that 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 I found quite interesting with, was was uh, with regards to the climate, like. Is there a clear trend of increasing frequency of natural disasters? Like, can we see this using open data sets? Like, can you actually see that the the, the frequency of of uh, natural disasters, maybe even normalized to the amount of recordings, um, is it actually increasing? Um, then also looking at Bitcoin. So it's often criticized for its energy consumption. Um, it would also be quite interesting to use open data sets if we could to compare it. Uh, or any similar such crypto uh, uh, that uses a, a similar technology, if it were at, at the scale of Bitcoin, let's say, uh, if we could compare it to the existing banking system. Because if the argument is that it's too energy intensive, uh, that argument isn't as strong if, if it's less so than our current banking system. So uh, that was another one I was thinking of. Um, and another one was, can we use open data sets to visualize global vegetation coverage over time? So are there places on earth where it's getting greener? I'm sure there are. Uh, where are they? And could we also see the vegetation uh, sort of types or families? Because often I've heard um, what people try to do is they try to plant like all these trees and it's actually not that good for the environment because they're planting uh, just the same tree. And, and, exactly. and, you kind of need like an ecosystem of, of stuff. You can't just plant the same thing. Um, so, so it would be interesting if you could use open source data to, to bring the stuff into the world because uh, it's, yeah, like it brings me to another point. I don't really have a slide for this, um, but like the way stuff works at the moment is that 
in a general sense with with the, the the sort of system we have with with education and stuff is like a lot of the university projects are done because companies are sponsoring them so a lot of or, or because the university itself wants to write more papers and publish more papers so the incentive uh doesn't necessarily push people with the time to focus on the stuff to focus on the right stuff it's either companies problems to make more money or to like i'm not, I'm not saying the company's problems are, are not like like but but all i'm saying is that the problems themselves are often um often the incentive is that the companies are paying the universities for students to work on specific problems or the the university are trying to publish more papers so so often there, there there's a large a large amount of opportunity to do this type of stuff uh your own analysis uh because there's not that many people working on the problem you you, you may think there's but there's less people than you you may think um so you actually can have quite a lot of success with this stuff especially because and that brings me to this slide now it's much easier to do this stuff because of all the tools there are. So like you can go onto all these like free education courses and teach yourself all of this stuff for free. Uh, or, or you can join a, a course like Jeremy and get, get, learn the stuff from a professional. Like you can, you can, but it, much, much cheaper than it used to be, you know, like it's not, you don't have to go and sit in a library and like find the book and you can really like teach yourself this stuff much faster uh, and there's a whole lot of libraries and tools that allow you to 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 implement like very sophisticated uh, machine learning models and things very quickly so i mean you need to know a, a bit to do to know what you're doing but you know you you just need to know what the right tool is for the job and how to configure it right for what you want to do you don't need to do all the stuff from scratch so you can you you what i'm saying is at this point in time you have tools available to you that no one's ever had in 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 like in life. Ever, yeah. in, the, in the whole of humanity so 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 you can use this stuff to answer problems uh that that maybe need to be answered and aren't being worked on so so yeah these are there's also a lot of open data sets uh you know nasa our world and data statista the world bank google public data uh 538 is quite a good one uh there's all these data sets that you can use and you can mix them together and, and and try and answer your own questions that you have so so if you have a question or a puzzle or a problem like i've tried i i guess i i just think that's what this word citizen data scientist means it means that you it's just people that realize this and start doing it um and I've, I've, I'm just starting out with it, but, but I've, I've found a lot of uh, satisfaction out of doing it. Um, so just to go back to this, these questions, um, the statistical correlation between CO2 emissions and global temperature, um, and the silver one and the, the data, the data science methodology one, I've written articles on that stuff now. Um, with some you know some of them with with more success than others like like i said the time series one i'll show you now but it's it's it actually veered off into more of like a tutorial on time series analysis um so it's actually still an ans unanswered question but it's also uh, i think it's got potential to be like a, a new sort of proof for 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 climate change basically based on statistics statistical data uh not mm -hmm. not necessarily uh forecasting models but uh previous historical data so um yeah these are some of the articles i've written um and yeah we can maybe dive into one if, if you guys do want to yeah i've just um i've just pushed the article on the time series and uh, climate change on the chat but uh what are the others uh article you've been talking to because you wanted to talk this about others maybe yeah, well, this green and silver one it was quite uh, interesting to me as well uh, because I mm -hmm. actually found something that I think was new that I don't think uh, was found before. Um, well, well I, 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 but, but it certainly helped me. Like I invested in silver after writing this article, uh, and and like it, the forecast that I made has worked out for me so far. Um, I guess. So, but yeah, that's 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 essentially so so. The, the citizen data scientist thing um 
some traits that I, because I, I, I have a few friends that I would, I would describe as a citizen data scientist. Um, but I find like the main common traits is that they're curious. So they, and they use their curiosity to leverage data they find to answer the questions they have. Um, usually they have self studied or studied some combination of programming, statistics, data science. Uh, along with whatever specific domain they have knowledge in. So often uh, you'll find people in accounting try and look at the accounting problems and in forestry are looking at forestry problems. Um, but they all sort of embrace this, this constant learning paradigm. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's mainly what I wanted to, to say. The last thing I have here is um, that, that the real purpose here with data science at least in the way I see it, is that it results in better decisions. So you sort of transform data, usually through some sort of visualization, uh, into information, and then that information you transform into better decisions. That's when data actually becomes useful, when you actually make a different decision than you would usually. Uh, so you can think of it as like the default decision. So you would make a, a default decision X if you use data, and you make a decision Y that's slightly different from the decision X you would have made, that, that difference is the value of the data. Otherwise, exactly. it's not valuable. Uh, so, so, so that's also, I guess, something that I've learned. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I don't have a very long one, but, but that's essentially it. And, and if you guys are keen, we could quickly dive into one of the articles. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's try this out. I'm really happy to, for on this last last slide you've put that made made me remember of the D I K W pyramid. You know this pyramid, and uh, maybe you can click on the link you have on the chat to look it up and, and show it to the people. because uh, yeah, cool. I put it on the on the chat here. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically it's a framework on which uh, many different uh, companies are built. Like you have data, then you have information, then you build knowledge, and this knowledge brings to somehow wisdom at one point. Mm. That you can make a wise decision based on whatever information and knowledge you have gained from the data at first. So we're just yeah, at exactly. the very beginning of the pyramid, but it's like data and information we're trying to figure out. And uh, knowledge will come from this information and eventually it can push uh, um, to better decision at um, citizen level. But I really, I really think that um, all those citizen data scientist initiatives that are scattered around the world, and there is many, um, uh, are going somehow to help uh, uh, government because as you have said really rightfully like there is not so many people working on this not so many yeah. and I, I found out the same thing there is not so many people crunching open data uh, today and, yeah. And, and, yeah. and even less there is not so much data taken by companies to uh, actually uh, mix their internal data with the external data. And this mm. is another problem as well, because it means that their decision making is self-centered, whereas they should be interconnected with the data we have uh, like uh, available. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, um, and the citizen data science uh, mindset is something we, we definitely are keen to like, investigate and do more because uh, to tell you a little more about our story um, before NAS uh, last year we during the COVID we have built with the uh, Florent Valentin and the, the the core team at NAS we've built uh, an application that was gathering uh, COVID data and um, and uh, market data we wanted to see how market the market was falling when COVID, uh, COVID cases were rising and at that point, it made a lot of sense uh, to mix the two data together. So we've been uh, trying to also to figure out, you know, this story of correlation and um, uh, causation, all those different uh, ways of analyzing how different curves can actually impact uh, another are very interesting because so, so often uh, we are stuck into hypothesis and we are uh, 
we are not actually looking the data the way we should be. Uh, so it's very important to be able to. That's what really interested me in the in the paper of uh, of um, of Peter. So if if I can share my screen now, um, maybe we can deep dive a bit more into your article, and uh, and then I'll show um the topics we have prepared on the trello board and we can discuss of uh, whatever we sh we could do uh um as a small team today but maybe uh, as we can spread the word we can have more people trying to figure out how we can do it uh because it's about uh you know as i said it's like spontaneous it's uh, completely non centralized it's totally decentralized uh, idea and it's also um kind of a freestyle event so we are trying to do whatever we can do and anything we can do would be always good thing you know so um here it is so the articles from uh peter so uh, can you guys see my screen properly yes yeah yeah okay yes okay so um what was interesting in the article and what is maybe something you we all need to to understand is that um, there is four components. There is the trend, seasonality, cyclicity, and irregularity. And we have also, um, so he explained perfectly the, the data sets, how to pull some data. Uh, there is the data set from the NASA. There is data set from CO2 emission on the World Bank. And um, well, he starts uh, like this and getting the data out with some CSV file that are already um, present in the different websites. And as it go, as we go, um, we have the wrangling, we have analyzing the data, what it is, how we can manipulate it. Um, and um, at one point, you managed to use Python library to define anomalies. Uh, you also go to uh, plotting the temperature in degrees Celsius. So that that you you basically resample it. So you you uh. you 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 basically compile. You compile. You you get rid of the noise because if the the top one there's a lot of noise. Um. Mm. So so you basically plotting instead of plotting like twenty different points in ten in like a ten unit interval. You'll take the average of those twenty points and plot one point. Uh, that's in that point. window, that's the so it makes it yeah. easier to see what's going on, like, uh, and it takes out the noise a bit. Um, All right. So in time series, this is very important to do. It can be. You cannot see clearly. No. Yeah, you can't really see. You can't really see. Uh, it, it takes out some of the noise. It's kind of dangerous sometimes. You don't want to. You don't want to. Like you don't want to take out things that that you that are important. Um, but it, it can be, it's, a, it's actually just a, pa a pandas function on a time mm -hmm. series as you can resample it to a different frequency. So it's, yeah. it's sometimes a good idea, especially if you want to see things with your eyes, you know, you, you, it's, hard to see, yeah. it's hard to see what's going on in the first graph. Yeah, it, it, in this article specifically, there was no main reason to do that with regards to the climate data itself. It was mainly to show how you can resample. So that's what I was saying with this article is more of an educational thing uh, than, yeah. than, 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 than else. Like it was to show you how to do it uh, in pandas. Yeah. Exactly. And one other educational interesting thing is also this idea of taking the global CO2 emission per capita. So always when you see the data uh, on this uh, NASA, OECD, like OECD or different sources, uh, I, I figured that it's always good to uh, find a way to put it per head, uh, per capita, uh, because it's making so much sense to analyze what actually it means for one uh, one head. And uh, that's always a good practice to do. So we're yeah. going to see how we can use that also in, in the challenge we're trying to build, because it's yeah. always a good thing to, to add this. Uh, uh, it's not only about looking at co2 emissions it doesn't mean the thing just to look at it uh, uh it, it needs to be it needs to be analyzed with another another axis another way of of breaking down the number to a thing that can actually be understandable by people 
Yeah. One caveat though is that um, in this one specific, if you actually wanted to see the correlation between uh, CO2 emissions and temperature, uh, what you would need to do if you did want to do it per capita, which is what I didn't do, is is normalize it per population growth. Because obviously, as population's growing, uh, you've got per capita figures. So say, oh, there was 10 people alive in 2010, and now there's a billion. Or now, okay, mm. let's make it like, now there's 100. Uh, the per capita value here, say, oh, there was 100 CO2 emissions over here, um, then then there'd be 10 per capita. But if there were 100 here, then there would be uh, one per capita, whereas the total yes. emissions is the same. So you can't actually correlate it with the temperature then. So you need to, you need to actually look at it in terms of population, which I didn't do here, yeah. but I did put a little star. So, so exactly. this one's still an unsolved question, actually. It would be interesting to see whether we can correlate uh, total CO2 with temperature. Um, it's, so it's uh, definitely a good thing. And thank you for bringing up the, the topic about uh, what we call in finance the, the perimeter effect. You cannot actually analyze the thing if you're not taking the same perimeter, which is uh, uh, get rid of the growth of the population to analyze it at constant perimeter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so. There's another, inf like a third parameter, like a hidden third parameter that's having an effect that you haven't taken into consideration, which is often, often a problem. Um, yes. Causation and statistics is a very uh, spiky problem. It's very, very difficult to prove causation because of that yes. fact that Jeremy's talking about. But uh, yeah, so, so y y y it's, it's difficult, but uh, you know, you can, you can prove strong correlation and you can prove that it's likely that there may be a causation, especially if you, but there, this is where you've got to go into your own sort of like thinking and logic uh yes you know you've got to just you got it's got there's no like like program that can give you the answer you have to like just you have to rationalize it properly um exactly totally agree and then what you can say about like, the the rest of the article is like basically you have managed to use plotly which is also the library that we use to plot the data and be able to deep dive into this uh, interactive graphs that you can follow over time. Because uh, I don't know if it's uh, Akshay, I don't know if Akshay is here, but uh, he talked about Matplot because he's using Matplot also, but those uh, libraries like Plotly are for me more dynamic to get uh, um, get uh, more deep dive into the data. As you can see, the, the drag and drop is really is really interesting or the, 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 the zone you can zoom in, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and uh, well, I will invite anyone to go further on this thing because then after that, uh, Peter is going into modeling and forecasting. So, um, can you tell us about that a bit? How did you did how you did that uh, using Profit, which is a library from from Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Facebook has a library called Profit, which is really good for uh, single variable forecasting. So, whenever there's a set or uni univariate forecasting whenever you have one single variable um it's really good at at for using all the information contained in that single variable to make a forecast i don't think at least when i did this article it does multivariate forecasting um but but yeah it's, it's really powerful it uses i think arima uh which is a, a mixture of things uh, it uses arima and a whole lot of things to forecast it um, but it it works pretty well. So um, if you're looking to so forecast, you could, have, you could have used Arima. I think it does use Arima in in plot in profit. I think it uses a combination of it. Yeah, because okay. you can split it up into the 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 various components of it as well. If you scroll okay. down, I think I did that. I can't remember. Um, yeah. But, oh, but this is NASA's forecast for the 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 yeah. the the temperature and it wasn't so different from our univariate uh one with profit it's pretty similar actually if you look at there it's going That's it's 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 similar so so we get similar results to nasa from from just using a library in python like like it's it's 
So, uh, and now yeah, for everybody here, I think it's so important to see that we can now access libraries with Python. And uh, and we, uh, 10 years back when I started in my work, this was not accessible at all. Yeah, it's it's really recently we have access to all those libraries, right? Yeah. What about, yeah. what do you think, Peter? Since when do, you, do we use this, this like very recent? Yeah, no, it's, no, it's recent now that it's become so easy to just pip install it or whatever. Um, what's the, uh, the other one data scientists use uh, the, the stats you one? Not Python, mm -hmm. but um, oh. yeah, there it breaks it down into yeah, so it breaks it down into the diff into uh, the trend and into the the um, seasonality. So it's quite cool. Like if if you have data that's like really apparent in summer or in a specific month of the year, this will show you those things. Uh, you'll break you'll mm -hmm. break it down just with this library to see like when the when the seasonality is, is coming into place. Like. Um, yeah so you talk about arima also here and uh yeah so basically i would invite anyone to read this uh, article it's really educational and that's why i wanted to also take this as a standing point for anything that we could build on top of it because having uh, read this article helps you better understand what we can get from the data and what are the different uh, steps uh that we should take to manage to to make a good analysis of whatever data we want to take out so it's yeah. um it's really good we can stop on this thing for a while and um then uh do you guys have any questions there is some here um we need the initiative to continue year on year because it takes time to analyze and and is needed for humanity so uh, Najandra, we are uh, totally aligned with the uh, with you, it takes time, and um, that's why we also wanted to take like this thing very easy. Uh, it's just uh, we are opening some some things that we don't know when it needs to be closed. Actually, it should never be closed. So we're just opening some subject and see see what, what's uh, what's going on. I will personally try to build awareness on this uh, through the LinkedIn and Twitter and post the results of whatever uh, notebook that can be built by uh, the crew that we are trying to to gather and um yeah it's uh, it's a cool uh, way and it, it should be put uh, year over year so let's see how it goes for this first one let's go step by step <laughs> and um what functionality does nas offer to help um uh, match you uh, i would say that uh, you know when um, you have to take data out uh, like as an input, you would need to uh, query and take out the CSV and whatever. So NAS with the scheduler, you would be able to schedule the fact to trigger the, the data set and bring it to you. Um, and you can also use some webhooks and all that will facilitate the input part. Then for the transformation, uh, you're hoping to build a few drivers uh, and you're talking about uh, plotting um, maps it's quite tedious to plot maps i must tell you i i, I totally agree with you uh, what we have done on the plotly driver in nas is uh, facilitating the fact to build line charts so far so maybe a good contribution on this would be to add the facilitator for the for the maps data and uh, be able to give only a few columns like a, a nas driver dot plotly dot map and you would be able to put the one column which is uh, the uh, the location code, one other, which is the, the data you want to plot, and that's it. You could be having your map plot uh, quite easily with a few um, few variables. So um, this is definitely an idea that we are thinking of, and um, anything we could think of, I will put it in the, in the backlog of uh, NAS, uh, the, the product, and we will see how uh, the Earth Data Challenge can feed uh, in a way, the backlog we could have uh, for the open source uh, product. So um, I don't know what you guys think of, but yeah, plotting a, a, a chart, a map is is quite tedious. And one other thing is uh, the fact that we could build uh, assets. So I've just posted on uh, on LinkedIn assets feature, so we can share this asset to the world, and we can plug this asset uh, and embed the the asset to websites. So what we could do is like we could use the asset produced at the output of the notebook and put it into websites 
showca showcasing who has done what thing and um, and uh, if people want to interact uh, uh, in more details we could re literally like uh, host the visuals the assets that are produced into uh, a website so I think it's it's good if we can think of it this way, uh, Matthew. Uh, input will be facilitated by uh, the NAS features. The the um, the transformation will be done uh, with uh, a few drivers, and maybe we can improve some drivers uh, in the meantime. And uh, as an output, I would definitely go for sharing assets with the with the NAS uh, asset feature, so we can uh, uh, use this URL to post it into LinkedIn, to post it into social media, to maybe schedule automatic posts from uh, Twitter or other platform like this, because we know how to do it. Could be something we can trigger. Um, so that's that's definitely something we can work on. And uh, and we have plenty of time to, to just check how we can uh, we can build a few first trials and then see if it works and, and use it for the other subjects. So right now, what we want to go on is maybe look at the Trello uh, board um, that I've built. And um, and I want just to uh, introduce you to this Trello board to explain how uh, it works, how we thought it might work good. And, um, and so we will define uh, maybe uh, how we can proceed forward. Um, so I, I just uh, had some fun yesterday making some good uh, uh, pictures to, to, to show the different topics. Uh, so we have uh, CO2 emission, uh, which is a big topic already tackled a bit by Peter. Um, we have uh, energy consumption, uh, quite interesting as well. Uh, we have food consumption. We know that uh, we are too many meat eaters in this planet, but... Uh, uh, we cannot supply all the meat uh, necessary for the, the future of, uh, of the, the population. So there is quite a lot of questions on food. Food also related to how we treat oceans, how we treat uh, the, 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 all these lands uh, that are used for, um, for cows and, uh, and, and all the other topics related to the different uh, um, documentaries that I've mentioned, um, this thing on Netflix called uh, Seaspiracy or Conspiracy that go quite heavy on the industries. So uh, I was thinking that maybe we could take out some data from this uh, documentary and see how this documentary has uh, taken the data, uh, take the same data and maybe build a few notebooks on the data they have provided. But being able to open source it could be a good thing. Um, we also have uh, natural disasters, uh, which are um, considered to be something really much more frequent nowadays. Uh, we have uh, indicators of uh, extreme events. So here I've put a few information that I've found on, on the different uh, website. Um, we can consider the COVID-19 as a natural disaster. I was thinking about it, uh, Peter. But I found an article from uh, Sciences Po, uh, uh, an, org an organization here in France, that has actually said that a pandemic is actually a natural disaster. Uh, we have the endangered species um, that are also uh, interesting to see. Um, there is uh, a, a case in, in France where the numbers of, uh, of uh, stranded dolphin has increased a lot. Uh, it's in Statistica, but it should be found in other topics. In other sources, we have um, the OECD that is bringing the list of endangered species. Uh, we can find it here. Um, so, and we have also the government actions. So, um, I don't know if you have heard about it, but there is this uh, thing called Kaya identity. This is quite interesting. I'm not going to deep dive right now on this thing, but uh, if you guys want to go through this. Uh, uh this board uh the invitation link is right here i'm going to paste it here um so those topics are here uh do you guys have any ideas you would like to deep dive on um or um, should we go with some example and how uh we could um, um go for one topic and start one topic with a, a few people that are interested what do you want to do we should i just proceed
Yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, so for example, one thing we could do is look at this uh, GDP versus CO2. This is something quite interesting. So this is something I took from one guy called uh, Jean Covici. It's a, it's a guy in France that is making a lot of noise on, the, on this topic. And he has been the first one to bring uh, this chart to life like GDP constant in billion with CO2 emission. And you can see that it's a straight line. So GDP, the more the GDP grow, the more the CO2 emissions are going up. So the question is, can we decouple this thing? Um, and I guess this is a very interesting chart to do because we could follow year over year the impact of um, CO2 emission and GDP, uh, CO2 emission and linked to GDP constant. What do you think about this chart? Yeah, uh, this is Rajendra. Yeah, hello, Rajendra. Yeah, I think uh, this uh, chart is good. Uh, but uh, uh, what I'd like to say is what will be interesting in this is uh, another thing which is running in parallel that, you know, uh, Europe. India and many of the countries are going to go with electric vehicles now and yes. uh, that that emission should go down so we should see a downward trend even per capita because uh, India is planning I think 2000, uh, 2030 that uh, it will be mostly electric vehicles all the, okay, all so the public transport is starting to go into uh, electric vehicles Good. Yeah. So we could add. So we could add here on the card that energy consumption, uh, car. Uh, that we could should we could add something like uh, visualize the adoption of uh, electric vehicle, for example. Yeah, a good a good measure. Like if you look at that that GDP chart, um, perhaps a good measure to sort of measure current countries is exactly what Rajendra is saying. It's if you manage to get this chart based on country, then you could say that the 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 oh. less it's correlated, the less it's correlated, the better they are at improving the economy without harming the environment or without okay. adding carbon. So so the 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 countries basically could be rank ordered based on how far away the correlation is. Because if the correlation is far away, it means they're doing a good job. They are. All, all they are are not growing the economy at all. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like if, if they are growing the economy and the carbon isn't uh, as correlated, then you can say they're doing it in a, in a like, uh, 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 like a, a, a better way. Obviously, it's, 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 it comes with a whole lot of political weight because uh, yeah. it's, not all current countries have it the same. Like in Africa here, the the we at a disadvantage like basically the states and the and europe have had much more time to industrialize um so i mean it but but it still would be interesting to see just at the moment how 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 correlated all the countries are you know i don't know cool just something that popped yeah, in my mind so that's definitely a point and so i would say that breaking down by countries would be a starting point on this thing like if we could have this chart but break it down by countries yeah that would be interesting because we could see if there is some countries that are making it going down yeah so i i have here this card um the checklist is here so we can add checklist if you join the board you can interact on it uh the sources might be uh, so i found it here um bp uh british petroleum uh, which is having a good set of data on energy consumption Statistical review of world energy, yeah, GDP and spending. So we can have we have a lot of open data here on the on those this website. So this might be also um, a good way to uh, yeah. use the data. Um, another like we're gonna take one card for one topic if you want. Uh, so. Another one would be maybe if we look at CO2 emissions. So I've, I've 
figured out this uh, this graph was interesting. Um, so the question is, so we have the greenhouse gases emission uh, uh, here um, with the years, and we have the million ton of CO2 equivalent. Uh, so this is showing us how methane and other and CO2 are actually rising in the atmosphere. And um, well, we saw that, like, this is interesting because the guy has put already some um, mention of uh, what has been going on in different, uh, in these different uh, years. So we have the electricity becoming commercially available, the first computer. We have the um, uh, mainframe um, become common, like the double, uh, the World Wide Web invention, the in the digital revolution, and then we have this uh, rising of uh, of the curve here, uh, quite important. So um, I don't uh, here. It's more like a topic on how we can maybe plot uh, these uh, different lines on top of a chart that is already done because i think it's very interesting when you look at a chart and you have this little arrows that can bring you to the actual uh, information you want to focus on the, have you ever done some stuff like this uh, peter on plotly or on any library like annotation like this yeah yeah it's quite you, you can do it with plotly i think you can make your own annotation yeah. so i think this is a good uh, good one but also another very interesting uh, data set i found is uh, uh, the s3 uh, which is taking the, um, uh, the, the this data is is quite crazy actually uh, those guys are showing the risk of uh, deadly heat so the region of the globe that might be very difficult to live in during the 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 future years um, so this chart uh, talking about uh, plotting uh, maps mm, the, all the data is here and uh, they have open source so, so everything so it's interesting to go and and dive on this uh, on this chart because it's uh, I think it's the one of one of the most uh, interesting way of uh, raising awareness to people because uh, there is people living in in those region of the of the globe. There is uh, India here. There is uh, Brazil. There is uh, South African countries. What is going to happen to those people? Uh, are are they going to move? Where are they going to move? Uh, this might be something we should uh, be seeing uh, the the hypothesis of uh, this uh, zone of the planet where uh, actually the temperature will be too high to live in. Um, it's quite scary, but uh, it's here. And so these guys from the S3 have done it. And uh, so I guess that um, their data is available. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure about it. And it could be interesting to, as a data uh, citizen data scientist, to take back this data and, and figure out a way to also plot it in, in an open notebook. Cool. This is... Yeah. This is some kind of a scary, scary plot. Uh, like here we have uh, emissions, uh, quite simple breakdown of emissions um, by sources. Um, this thing could be interesting as well. And uh, if we go to a few other, um, other resources that I have found, the global mean sea level, the the mean of the sea level is interesting uh the ocean heat how what's the temperature of the ocean uh this is also available in 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 data sets um uh the fish landing um this is also very interesting so uh, all the resources i've found i will uh i will bring more uh sources into each card because I'm not finished, I, I didn't finish the documentation of what I've, what are my findings so far. But uh, you guys can look at it uh, as it moves um, um, on. Uh, as I add more data, you would be able, guys, to to take more information from it. And feel free to add um, new cards and and mention um, that you are going to work on this thing. Are you good with that, guys? 
Yeah? That sounds great. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. It's, it's made, yeah. Cool. Let's do it and let's keep uh, let's keep talking and uh, make it uh, asynchronous, uh, decentralized, freestyle. But let's try it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, everyone. Good man. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Great. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Bye.